Hi, welcome children. <coughs> welcome to the chemistry class. See, in this class, we are discussing a few questions, typical questions from the first chapter. That is, some basic concepts of chemistry. Almost one third questions are basically from the original entrance examination questions and the two third questions are the probable, the most probable type of variety of questions from the concerned chapter. So today's discussion, somewhat 20, 30 questions that we are going to discuss, typical type of question, pattern of question from the chapter one. So listen to the class till the end properly and see what are the various kind of questions and how to tackle it in a stereotype way and in a shortcut way. Okay. Can we start? Ready? A warm welcome to the class once again. Let's have a talk on the questions from chapter 1. Okay. Some basic concepts of chemistry. You have the first question, <clears throat> a simple question from the chapter. The number of water molecules is maximum. Number of water molecules is maximum. How to find the number of molecules? All of you know, it is number of moles into Avogadro constant. So, number of molecules is equal to number of moles into Avogadro constant. Right? So, 18 gram of water, 18 gram of water means all of you know, it is 1 mole. 1 mole will contain Avogadro number of molecules. Second one, 18 mole of water, 18 mole of water will contain 18 into Avogadro number of molecules. 18 gram means 1 mole. So, 1 mole contain Avogadro number of molecules, all of you know. Now, 18 mole, 18 mole, it contains 18 Avogadro number of molecules. 18 molecules of water means 18 molecules of water. 1.8 gram of water, that is 0.1 mole, that will be 0.1 into Avogadro number. So, the question is maximum. So, no doubt, option 2. Option 2 is the answer. 18 mole water contain the maximum number of molecules. A fundamental simple question from the chapter. Okay. Yes. So that is the answer. Second one. Second choice is the correct answer. So suppose it is asked for minimum. Minimum number of water molecules. See this is Avogadro number. La, la, high number. This is high. This is also pretty high. So, the answer will be option 3. Option 3 will be the answer if asked for minimum. Option 2 will be the answer if asked for maximum. So, that is the first question. We are moving to second question. If Avogadro number is changed from 6.022 into 10 power 23 per mole, to 6.022 into 10 power 20 per mole, this would change. This would change. Suppose we are changing the Avogadro constant, what will be the result? The ratio of chemical species to each other in a balanced equation, no, that is not going to change. The ratio of elements to each other in a compound, that won't change. The definition of mass, that won't change. It is what changing is the mass of one mole carbon. See, one mole carbon, if the Avogadro number is 10, 6.02 into 10 power 23, one mole carbon is 12 gram. 12 gram. Suppose the number of moles is, I mean, Avogadro number changing from this, this, this to that, the mass will change. So, 12 gram carbon is this much of particle. That is the experimental observation. 12 gram carbon is that much of particle or that much of particle 12 gram. So, if that much of particle, what is the gram? It is 
divided by 1000. 12 gram divided by 1000. That is 12 milligram. It will change to 12 milligram. So this would cause the change in mass of one mole carbon from 12 gram to 12 milligram. However, the array, the remaining, the other, other options, there is no influence. So it is very simple to understand. It's very simple to understand. Avogadro number of particles is one mole, that is 12 gram. Based on the standard, uh, in the latest standards and the stable isotope of carbon concept. So 12 gram Avogadro number of particles. Suppose the number of particles change, this mass will change. That's it. So the choice is fourth one. Adatha Jodhya. 20 gram magnesium carbonate sample decomposes on heating to give carbon dioxide and 8 gram magnesium oxide. What will be the percentage purity of magnesium carbonate in the sample? From the, from the choices and from the question it is clear that the given sample of magnesium carbonate is impure. This given sample of magnesium carbonate is impure. So what is the percentage of purity? That is what the question. So based on the stoichiometry, for getting this much of magnesium oxide, what is the mass of magnesium carbonate required? We will find out. That mass will be definitely less than this 20 gram. And then we can find the percentage of purity. Let's see. Let's see how to solve it. You see, this is the balanced equation, all of you know. Magnesium carbonate will give you magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Molar mass of magnesium carbonate, all of you know, 84. And that of magnesium oxide, it is 40. So, one mole magnesium carbonate will give you one mole magnesium oxide. That is, 84 gram magnesium carbonate will give you 40 gram magnesium oxide. Therefore, 8 gram magnesium oxide will be obtained from, you see, for getting, for getting 40 gram magnesium oxide, we need 84 gram magnesium carbonate, 1 mole magnesium carbonate, 84, 1 mole magnesium oxide, 40. So, to get this much, you need this much. So, for getting 8 gram, how much is required? It is 84 by 40 into 8, that is 16.8 milligram is required. It is not milligram, gram. 16.8 gram is required. How much is taken? 20 gram is taken. So when you take 20 gram, you are getting, you are getting 8 gram. Actually, this much is enough. Actually, this much is enough. It is coming 20. That means the remaining is impurity. So, out of 20, out of 20, this is the actual mass of magnesium carbonate available, remaining is impurity. So, what is the purity of magnesium carbonate? The actual weight divided by total weight into 100. You will get 80 percentage, 80 percentage. So, 20 percentage is impurity. So, I will repeat, one mole magnesium carbonate will give you one mole magnesium oxide. One mole magnesium carbonate means 84 gram will give you 40 gram magnesium oxide. Therefore, to get 8 gram magnesium oxide, we need how much? We need to find out. And that comes around 16.8. Okay. So that means out of 20, this is the actual weight of magnesium carbonate and the remaining is impurity. So what is the percentage of impurity? The actual weight out of total weight into 100. Hope it is clear. Going to option which one? Second choice. 80 or 84 or 6.8 by 20 into 100. It is 84 percentage. It is 84 percentage to be precisely second choice. I think it is clear. Can we go to next? Yes. Ardha Jodhya. 
What is the mole fraction of solute in a one molal aqueous solution? What is the meaning of one molal? One molal means one mole solute in thousand gram solvent. That is one mole. Sorry, one molal. What do we want to find out? We want to find the mole fraction. So mole fraction x is equal to number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent. Number of moles of solute is 1. Number of moles of solute is 1. Number of moles of solvent. It is 1000 divided by 18 water. And that you get 1 by 1 plus. This will come 55.5 you know. So the answer is, what is the answer? 1 divided by 56.5. This is the mole fraction. 1 divided by 56.5. Okay. Hey, the answer over here. 1 by 60 will be 0 0.0166. 1 by 56 will be option 2. You will get option 2. This one 0 0.0177. Try it out. If it is 1 by 60, you will get 0 0.0166 like that. 1 by 6, think. So, 1 by 56.5 means slightly higher figure. 0 0.0177 is the second choice. Second choice is the correct answer. So, mole fraction, ask you to find out mole fraction, molality given. Molality means... 1 molal means 1 mole solute in 1000 gram solvent. So, number of moles of solute, 1. Number of moles of water, 1000 by 18. Enough. Next question. What is the mass of precipitate formed when 50 ml 16.9 solution AgNO3 mixed with 50 ml 5.8 of NaCl? That is a question. Precipitate obtained here is AgCl. Silver nitrate react with a silver nitrate react with a NaCl. You will get AgCl precipitate. This is the reaction. NaCl plus AgNO3. You will get AgCl plus NaNO3. So the percentage and quantity of these two are given. Ethrea, silver nitrate, 50 ml, 16.9, weight by volume percentage. NaCl, 50 ml, 5.8, weight by volume percentage. So, what is the mass of AgCl obtained? That is the question. That is the question. Simple, no? How can we do that? You see, 16.9 percentage. That means 16.9 gram in 100 ml. Therefore, in 50 ml, how much? We are talking about AgNO3. 16.9 percentage means 16.9 gram in 100 ml. Therefore, in 50 ml, half of that 8.45. 100 ml contain 16.9 gram. 50 ml contain how much? 8.45 gram. Now, think about NaCl. Now, think about NaCl. 100 ml contain 5.8 gram. Therefore, 50 ml contain half of that, 2.9 gram. So, the mass of AgNO3, mass of AgNO3, this much number of moles of AgNO3 will be mass by molar mass. Mass of AgNO3, 8.45 divided by molar mass of AgNO3, you will get 0 0.05 mole. That is the number of moles of AgNO3. Similarly, mass of NaCl by molar mass of NaCl, that is 2.9 divided by 58.5, you will get a 0 0.05. So, this is 0 0.05 mole, this is 0 0.05 mole, 1 mole, 1 mole, 1 mole. 1 mole AgNO3 react with 1 mole NaCl giving 1 mole AgCl. So, AgCl obtained is how much? This is 0 0.05, this is 0 0.05. So, this obtained will be 0 0.05 mole. 
therefore number of moles of AgCl 0 0.05, 0 0.05, therefore mass will be 0 0.05 into molar mass, 140, 108 plus 35, 143.5, 143.5, 0.05 into 143.5, approximately 7 gram, you will get first choice, 7 gram, okay, so, the percentage of AgNO3 given, percentage of NaCl given, 100 ml contained this much, so 50 ml contained half of that, find the number of moles, 100 ml contained 5.8, 50 ml contained half of that, find the number of moles, both are giving same number of moles, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, now look at the stoichiometry, one mole react with one mole, you get one mole, therefore 0 0.05 react with 0 0.05, you get 0 0.05, AgCl obtained is 0 0.05 mole. Therefore, mass will be 0 0.05 into molar mass of AgCl. Clear alert. Next question. Molarity of an aqua solution with rise in temperature. Molarity of an aqua solution with rise in temperature. You know molarity is temperature dependent. Molarity is temperature dependent. Molarity is equal to Molarity is equal to number of moles per liter. Number of moles per liter. You see when the temperature increases, temperature rise in temperature. When temperature increases, volume increases, molarity decreases and option 2. Isn't it? See when the temperature increases, volume increases. When the volume increases, molarity decreases. But the answer is not 2. But the answer is not 2. Answer is 4. This is the correct answer. Is the correct answer? This is correct, but this is more correct. This is correct, but this is more correct. And the correct answer is fourth choice. Because we are dealing with the aqueous solution. Aqueous solution dealing with the water. And water is having something special. And the meticulous look at the concept of this question, the correct answer is fourth choice. That is most appropriate answer. Fourth choice is the correct answer. In the garium, water is having something special. What is speciality? See, simply comment the rise in temperature. The rise in temperature may be 0 to 20 degrees Celsius. It can be from 0 to 20 degrees Celsius. As far as aqua solution is concerned, 0 to 4 and 4 to 20 is going to make two different kinds. 0 to 4 density increases. The density of water is maximum at a 4 degree. You have learnt. Density of water is maximum at a 4 degree. You have learnt. So from 0 to 4 density increases. From 4 to 20 density decreases. You know density is equal to mass by volume. Density increases means volume decreases. So, 0 to 4, volume is not increasing, volume is decreasing. We are thinking about a meticulous point of that uh, concept. So, in aqua solution, 0 to 4, 4 to 20, it is different observation. 0 to 4, volume is not increasing, it is decreasing. 4 above, the volume is increasing. So, we can't say completely that when the temperature increases, volume increases. When the temperature increases, say it is from 0 to 4. When the temperature increases, volume is not increasing, volume is decreasing. And 4 onwards, the volume is increasing. So, it can be volume increase or decrease. That means concentration may increase or decrease according to what range of temperature we take. And that is not commented in the question. That's why. See, simply commented rise in temperature. It can be any range of temperature. So, in that case, the correct meticulous answer will be choice 4. I think it is clear. Next. Suppose the elements X and Y combine to form two compounds, X Y2, X3 Y2. When 0.1 mole XY2 weighs 10 gram, 0 0.05 mole X3Y2 weigh 9 gram, the atomic weight of X and Y are. That is the question. 
So, 0 0.1 mole of this weighs 10 gram. Therefore, 1 mole weighs 100 gram. 0 0.1 mole weighs 10 gram. Therefore, 1 mole weighs 100 gram. So, molar mass is 100 gram per mole. Molar mass of X2Y, we got it. 100 gram per mole. So, X plus 2Y is equal to 100. Pinna. 0 0.05 mole 9 gram. 0 0.05 mole 9 gram. Therefore, 0 0.1 mole 18 gram. 1 mole 180 gram. So, molar mass of this is 180. Isn't it? 0 0.05 is 9 gram. So, take two times. 0 0.1 90 gram. Sorry. 18 gram. 0 0.05 9 gram. Take the double, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 will be 18 gram. 1 mole, it will be 180 gram. So, the molar mass of this will be 180 gram. That means 3x plus 2y. That will be 180 gram. So, you have two equation to solve x and y, that's all. You have two equation to solve x and y, that's all. Is it? Fine. You see 0 0.1 mole, that is 10 gram. Therefore, 1 mole will be 100 gram. 1 mole will be 100 gram. So, x plus 2y equal to 100 gram, equation 1. Because the molar mass of this will be 100 gram per mole. 100 gram per mole. In it, it? 0 0.05 in a 9 gram. Therefore, 1 mole, 1 mole. 180 gram per mole. So, that will be x2 y3. X, sorry, x3 y2. So, it is 3 x plus 2 y is 180. So, take these two equations for solving x and y. x you will get 40 and y you will get 30. Simple calculation you can easily find out. Check it out. 30 and 40. That is a choice 3. x3 x40 y30. Option 3. Clear alert. Next one. A mixture of 2.3 gram formic acid, 4.5 gram oxalic acid treated with concentrated sulfuric acid. The evolved gaseous mixture passed through KOH pellet. Weight in gram of remaining product at STP will be. See, formic acid reacting with the sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is the dehydrating agent. If you take formic acid, this is formic acid. Formic acid undergoing dehydration, you will get carbon monoxide. You will get one mole carbon monoxide. Suppose it is oxalic acid. What do you get? Oxalic acid. C O O H C O O H. This is oxalic acid. If this is undergoing dehydration, you can see this OH is grown and this H is gone. It is removing water. It is removing water and it will break here. You will get carbon monoxide and you will get carbon dioxide. You will get carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So, you will get one mole carbon monoxide and one mole carbon dioxide. So, here you get carbon monoxide only. Here you get carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Is it clear? Now, 2.3 gram formic acid. How much carbon monoxide? 1 mole, 1 mole. 4.5 gram oxalic acid. How much carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide? 1 mole give, 1 mole, 1 mole. So, you work out. You work out. This is reaction number 1 and this is reaction number 2. Number of moles of formic acid, 2.3 gram divided by 46, 0.05 mole. Number of moles of oxalic acid, 2.3 by 46, that is 0 0.05 mole. That means this obtained is 0 0.05. This obtained is 0 0.05. This obtained is 0 0.05. Because 1 mole give 1 mole, 1 mole give 1 mole, 1 mole. This is 0 0.05 mole, this is 0 0.05 mole. This is 0.05 mole, this is 0.05, this is 0.05. Now comes the 
point. This CO2 will be absorbed by KOH. Carbon dioxide is absorbed by KOH. Now what remains? This is absorbed by KOH. What remains? What remains is this. And what is the what is the mass of that in grams? That is a question. What is the mass of that in grams? That is a question. So how much is available? See 0 0.05 CO here and 0 0.05 CO here. So total number of moles of CO. Total number of moles of CO. 0.1 mole. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And CO2 formed. 0 0.05. And that is absorbed by KOH pellet. So what remaining is only CO. What remaining is only CO. CO remaining is 0.1 mole. That is 0.1 into molar mass of carbon monoxide. 0.1 into 28. That is 2.8 gram. Either choice first choice. So we get the formic acid. We get the carbon monoxide. Oxalic acid we get the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide is removed. Only remaining is carbon monoxide from this and that. Take the total and find the mass. Okay. Next question. Which among the following is PPM? PPM is parts per million. Parts per million is milligram per liter. Or it is microgram per ml. Both are same. Answer is 4. 1 PPM is 1 milligram per liter. Or it may be microgram per ml. Both the choices are correct. What about this gram per ml? So it is fourth choice. Fourth choice. Are the question. Number of moles of hydrogen molecules required to produce 20 mole ammonia. 20 mole ammonia. It is N2 plus 3H2. You are getting 2NH3. 1 mole, 3 mole, 2 mole, 10 mole, 30 mole, 20 mole. So to get 20 mole, you need 30 mole. Option 2. Next. Option 2. 1 mole mixture of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Required exactly 28 gram KOH for complete conversion of carbon dioxide to potassium carbonate. How much more KOH would it require for the conversion of potassium carbonate if CO in the mixture is also completely oxidized to CO2? See, you have one mole mixture of CO and CO2. And that requires 28 gram KOH for complete conversion of CO2. Now, remaining CO. So, out of the mixture CO, CO2, CO2 is removed. Now, remaining CO. Now, to remove that CO when converted to CO2, how much more KOH is required? That is a question. This is the basic equation. 2 mole KOH react with 1 mole carbon dioxide. And number of moles of KOH used up first 28 gram that is 0.5 mole. So KOH first used up in the mixture. It is 0.5 mole. Therefore CO2 in that mixture, initial mixture we had CO plus CO2. CO plus CO2 total 1 mole. And uh, to neutralize this, to react this, to absorb this, you need 0.5 mole KOH. Therefore, CO2 will be, you see, 2 mole, 1 mole. The ratio is, ratio is 1 with half. 2 with 1, 1 with half. So, this, this is the number of moles of KOH. Therefore, number of moles of CO2 will be half of that 0 0.025, sorry, half of 0.25. So, number of moles of carbon dioxide will be 0.25. If this is 0.25, this is 0.75 because total is 1 mole. This is 0.25. So, this will be 0.75. So, number of moles of carbon monoxide will be 0.75. 
and now this 0.75 carbon monoxide is converted to carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide formed will be the new carbon dioxide formed. This is converted to this. This is converted to this. So you are getting new carbon dioxide that is 0.75 mole. And for neutralize that, and for neutralize that, how much uh, how much KOH you need? You need two times. The KOH required is two times of this. So carbon dioxide newly formed 0.75. Therefore, KOH newly required. It is 0.75 into 2. That is 1.5 mole KOH required. Question is how much mass? So it is 1.5 into 56. That is 84 gram is further required. So initially we had one mole mixture of CO, CO2. To remove that CO2, the quantity of KOH required is 0 0.05 mole. That means CO2 will be half of that, 0.25 mole. So CO2 is 0.25, therefore CO is 0.75 because total is 1 mole. Now this 0.75 CO converted to CO2. How much you get? 0.75 CO2 you get. One mole, give one mole. Now that 0.75 CO2, how much KOH you need? Two times, 0.75 into 2, 1.5 mole KOH is required. How much mass? 1.5 mole into molar mass of KOH. I think it is clear. Next question. Mass of sulfuric acid required to dissolve 0.5 gram magnesium carbonate. Mass of sulfuric acid required. See, this is the reaction. One mole, one mole, one. That is a reaction. So, one mole magnesium carbonate, you need one mole sulfuric acid. One mole magnesium carbonate means 84 gram. You need one mole sulfuric acid, 98 gram. Therefore, therefore, 0.5 gram requires how much? So, it is 98 by 85, 84 into 0.5. You get option D, 0.5833. So, one mole magnesium carbonate react with the one mole sulfuric acid. So, 0.5 gram magnesium carbonate, how much sulfuric acid is required? 84 na 98 0.5, how much? Next. Number of moles of calcium phosphate which contain 0.1 mole oxygen atom. 0.1 mole oxygen atom. See, one mole contain 8 mole oxygen atom. One mole contain 8 mole oxygen, 4 into 2, 8 mole oxygen atom. One mole calcium phosphate contain 8 moles of oxygen atom. So, 8 mole oxygen, it is 1 mole calcium phosphate. Therefore, 0.1 mole oxygen atom. How much it is? So, 1 by 8 into 0 0.1, 0 0.1 by 8, 0 0.1 by 8, 0 0.1 by 8, option C. Arthur Jodhya. Molality of 3 molar urea solution. Density 1.1 gram per ml is. See, when molality given, sorry, when molarity given, density given, how to find the molality? When molarity given, density given, how to find the molality? You can apply a shortcut equation. You can apply a shortcut equation. This is the shortcut equation. 1000 into molarity by... 1000 into density minus molarity into molar mass of the solute. What is the molarity? 3. What is the density? 1.1. What is the molar mass? Urea. Molar mass is 60. You get your answer. Option A. Or you must think stereotype. Stereotype you must think. Molality means mole per kilogram of solvent. What given? 3 molar. What is the meaning? 
थ्री मोल इन वन लीटर वन लीटर ऑफ वाट सोल्यूशन सो वाट इज द डेंसिटी ऑफ द सोल्यूशन मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन बाई वॉल्यूम सो वाट इज द मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन इज डेंसिटी इन टू वॉल्यूम वाट इज डेंसिटी वन पॉइंट वन वाट इज द वॉल्यूम थाउजेंड सो दिस इज द मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन दिस इज द मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन वी वॉन्ट मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट सो वाट इज द मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट वाट इज द मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट इट इज मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन डिवा माइनस मास ऑफ सोल्यूट वाट इज मास ऑफ सोल्यूशन वन पॉइंट वन इन टू थाउजेंड वाट इज द मास ऑफ सोल्यूट मास ऑफ सोल्यूट थ्री मोल थ्री मोल सो इट इज थ्री इन टू सिक्सटी सो दैट गिवस यू मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट now 3 mole in this much of solvent 3 mole solute 3 mole solute in this much of solvent okay therefore how many mole solute in 1000 gram solvent so it is 1000 into 3 divided by that will take you to this formula so once you do stereo stereotype or you can apply the shortcut formula no problem both are same i repeat molality means mole per kilogram of solvent so you need to get the mass of solvent what you know is molarity 3 molar that means 3 mole in 1 liter so volume of the solution is 1 liter therefore mass of solution density into volume density given 1.1 into volume 1000 ml so this is the mass of the solution therefore mass of solvent will be mass of solution minus mass of solute mass of solution this much mass of solute atreya 3 mole 3 molar means 3 mole so it is 3 into molar mass of solute so 3 into 60 hope you find 1000 into 1.1 minus 3 into 60 that is what this now this much solvent 3 mole solute 1000 gram solvent how much solute this is molarity So it is how to find cross multiply thousand into three divided by this and you are taken to that. I think it is clear. Next question. One point six gram sulfur converted into sulfuric acid. Mass of sodium sulfate obtained in neutralization of this acid is. Another simple question. You see, one sulfur you can get one sort sodium sulfate. That's a simple logic you can apply. That is a simple logic you can apply. You see that sodium sulfate contains one sulfur. So one point six gram sulfur converted to sulfuric acid. The mass of sodium sulfate obtained on the neutralization of this acid is that means one sulfur. One sodium sulfate, one sodium sulfate, one mole sulfur ultimately will produce one mole sodium sulfate. One mole sulfur means thirty-two gram. One mole sodium sulfate is one forty-two gram. Thirty-two gives one forty-two. One point six gives how much? So it is one point six into one forty-two divided by thirty-two. You get your answer. Option A. Okay, next. A solution containing ten percentage of weight by volume NaOH, having density one point one gram per ml. The volume of the solution containing two mole NaOH is two mole NaOH is so ninety mass percentage NaOH. Density one point one gram per ml. Volume of the solution containing two mole NaOH is okay. Ten percentage. What is the meaning? Ten gram in hundred gram solution. Ten gram NaOH in hundred gram solution. Isn't it? Ten gram NaOH in hundred gram solution. Now what we are looking for? Two mole NaOH. Two mole NaOH means eighty gram NaOH. Eighty gram NaOH. 
So 10 gram, 100 gram solution. Therefore, 80 gram NaOH. What is the mass of solution? Ethra vira. Ethra vira. 100. Ah, 10 gram contain, contained 100 gram solution. Therefore, 80 gram in how much of solution? 80 into 100 divided by 10. That is 800 gram solution. So, mass of solution is 800 gram. What is the volume? Density given. Density is equal to mass by volume. Therefore, volume is equal to mass by density. Mass by density, 800 by 1.1. 800 by 1.1, slightly less than 800. Or a figure less than 800, only one choice. Only one choice, B. So, percentage given, 10 percentage. That means out of 100, 10. So, 10 gram in 100 gram. We are talking about 2 mole NaOH. 2 mole NaOH means NaOH in a molar mass of 40. 2 mole NaOH is 80 gram. So, 10 gram in 100 gram. 80 gram in how much solution? 800 gram solution. So, what is the volume of that solution? That is a question. 800 gram solution. What is the volume? It is divided by density. You get the volume. Okay. Next. 50 ml, 10 molar HCl, 25 ml, 12 molar HCl, 40 ml, 5 molar HCl, mix it together. Volume made up to 100,000 ml by adding water. Molarity of the resultant solution is, you know that M1V1 plus M2V2 plus ah, M3V3 divided by P final. All data given M1, V1, M2, V2, M3, V3, V final. All data given. Work out here. Ethra vera M1, V1, M2, V2, M3, V3 divided by V final. You will get one molar option A. Okay, next. What mass of KNO3 is to be heated to produce 32 gram oxygen? All are stoichiometric questions. 32 gram oxygen. This is the balanced equation. 2 KNO3 produces 2 KNO2 plus O2. 2 mole give 1 mole. 2 mole give 32 gram. That is 2 mole. That is the answer. What mass of KNO3 to be heated to produce? 32 gram oxygen. 32 into 2 mole. 2 mole into 2 into 101. 2 into 101. 202 gram. Clear line. Next. Two oxides of metal M contain 50%, 40% of metal respectively. Formula of the first oxide is MO. Formula of the second oxide is another simple question. See here, 50-50, 1 is to 1. 50-50, 1 is to 1. Here, 40-60. That is, 4 is to 6. That is, 2 is to 3. That is, M2O3. Option B. Law of multiple proportion. And empirical formula. Next. Number of oxalic acid molecules in... 100 ml 0.2 molar oxalic acid. Number of molecules is equal to number of moles into Avogadro constant. What is the number of moles? Molarity into volume in liter into Avogadro constant. What is molarity? 0.2. What is volume in liter? 0.1 liter. So what is the answer? 0 0.2, 0 0.1 into Avogadro number over. So 0.2 into Ah, it's a So it is 0.2 into 6.023 into 10 raised to 22. 0.1. I am cancelling. It is 6.023 into 10 power 23 into 0.1. That is 6.023 into 10 power 22 into 0.2. 1.2 something into 10 power. Option A. Option D. Option D. 1.2 into 10 power 22. 
6 into 0.2, 1.2 into 10 power 22. That is the answer. Option D. So, number of molecules is equal to number of moles into Avogadro constant. Simply work out. Next. 50 ml of an aqua solution of glucose contain 6.02 into 10 power 22 molecules. Molarity of the solution. Molarity of the solution. Very simple to understand. This is 0.1 mole. This is 0.1 mole. Because 6.022 into 10 power 23, 1 mole. 22, 0.1 mole. 0 0.1 mole in 50 ml. 0.1 mole in 50 ml. 0.2 mole in 100 ml. And 2 mole in 1000 ml. See, to think in the mind, not to write. Think in the mind, no need to write. 0 0.1 mole, 50 ml, 0 0.2 mole, 100 ml, 2 mole, 1000 ml, and that is molarity. Molarity means mole per liter, mole per liter, 2. Fourth choice. Fourth choice. A crystalline salt, sodium sulfate, ex water, on heating loses. 56% of its weight and becomes anhydrous. The value of X is. So when you heat it, when you heat it, it is converted to Na2SO4. Yes. And by this time, there is loss of 56% by weight. There is a loss of 56% by weight. So what is that quantity? It is nothing but water. It is nothing but water. So, percentage of water is 56 percentage. Percentage of water is 56 percentage. And thereby you want to find out what is this X. So, simple no? How to find? Percentage of water. That is 56 is equal to. Ah, how much water? 18 is the molar mass of water into x divided by total molar mass into 100. You can find out x. Molar mass of this unit, molar mass of the entire unit, it is this much, 142 plus 18x, 142 for this and 18x this. When heated to anhydrous salts, Loss in mass is 18x per mole. That is percentage loss in mass. That is the quantity of water. It is 18x divided by total molar mass into 100. So, either on a 56. Either on a 56 percentage. Because upon heating that is gone. And there is a decrease in weight by a 56 percentage. That means percentage of water is 56. 18x is 56 percentage. So, what is x? You can work out to get uh, option D. 10. Next. Va volume of ammonia gas at STP that should be passed through 15 ml 1 molar HCl to bring down its molarity to 0 0.1 molar. Fifteen ml one molar to bring down point one molar, assuming the volume remain constant. Okay, fifteen ml one molar. That means molarity into volume in milliliter. One into fifteen, fifteen millimoles. Molarity into volume in milliliter. That is millimoles. So it is fifteen into one. That is fifteen millimoles. After neutralization. Molarity is 0.1. So, what is the quantity? Volume remain constant. That is 0.1 molar into 15 ml. That is 1.5 millimole. Final number of moles of the acid. Therefore, millimoles of acid to be neutralized. 
initial quantity 15, final quantity 1.5. So the neutralized quantity 13.5 millimole. 13.5 millimole. Above itrayum. 13.5 millimole means 13.5 millimole means 13.5 into 10 power minus 3 mole. Nam kenda venda etra ammonia passi anna jodhiyam. How much ammonia in volume at STP is the question. You see, one mole require one mole. For neutralizing this much of acid, you need that much of ammonia. So ammonia required is this much mole. So what is the volume at STP? Volume at STP, one mole is 2,400 ml. Therefore, this many moles, that will be that into 2,400 ml. Therefore, 302.5 ml at STP. Option D. So, initial quantity of HCl was 15 millimole. And you are passing ammonia. How much volume ammonia you are passing in Anachodhyam? So, that the final concentration is 0.1 molar. So, initial quantity 1 molar 15 ml, 15 millimole. Final quantity 0.1 molar 15 ml, 1.5 millimole. How much neutralized? 15 minus 1.5. 13.5 millimole neutralized. So, how much ammonia required? The same ammonia is required. 1 mole, 1 mole. Same ammonia required. So, number of moles of ammonia required is the same. For that many moles, what is the volume? One mole is 2,400 ml. Older STP standards. One mole is 2,400 ml. So, 13.5 into 10 power minus 3 mole. Into 2,400 ml. You will get somewhat 300. The choices are pretty large. You can go for a wild guessing. I mean, wild uh, approximation. Next. Maximum amount of barium sulfate precipitated on mixing 50 ml each of 0.5 molar barium chloride and 1 molar hydrogen sulfate, sulfuric acid is 1 molar sulfuric acid is maximum amount of barium sulfate precipitated. You are mixing 500 ml each of 0.5 molar barium chloride and 1 molar sulfuric acid. So it is barium chloride, sulfuric acid, barium sulfate, HCl. This is the balanced equation. So one mole this, one mole this. You get one mole of this. Is that thread 0.5 molar 500 ml. 0.5 into 0.5. Molarity into volume in liter. Molarity 0.5 into molarity. Sorry, volume in volume in liter 0.5. 0.5 into 0.5. 0 0.25. Ido 1 molar 500 ml, that is 1 molar into volume in liter, 0.5 liter, 1 into 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We are talking initial quantity, this is 0. So it is clear this is the limiting reactant, this is the limiting reactant, while this is excess. So this remaining is 0, this remaining will be, ah. Uh, Reacting. This will be reacting completely. 0.25. Completely react. This reacting is 0.25. Remaining is 0.5 minus 0.25. This much remain. So the reacting quantity is 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And here obtained is 0.25. Because one mole reacting with one mole, you get one mole. So barium sulfate obtained is 0.25 mole. Option B. Limiting reactant is barium chloride. Limiting reactant is barium chloride and the quantity is 0.25 mole. 1 mole barium chloride, you can get 1 mole barium sulfate. 0.25 mole barium chloride, you can get 0.25 mole barium sulfate. That's all. Next. Density of 2 molar solution glucose. Molality of the solution. Same equation. Same equation. Molality is equal to... 1000 molarity divided by 1000 density minus molarity into molar mass. All are given. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. glucose is molar mass. Are here. So, work out. 
thousand two by thousand density minus molarity into molar mass. Check whether you get option B two point seven or not. And this is what the stereo type which I have explained earlier. Next. Twenty sixth question. Three point zero one into ten power twenty two molecules are removed from four point four gram carbon dioxide. Number of moles of remaining carbon dioxide is number of moles of remaining carbon dioxide is. You see, four point four gram carbon dioxide means point one mole because carbon dioxide is molar mass forty four. So four point four means point one mole. Now. Number of moles of CO2 removed. That is given particle by Avogadro number. This much particle you are removing. So how many moles? 3.01 into 10 power 22 divided by Avogadro constant. This is the number of moles you are removing. So taken quantity 0.1, removed quantity 0.05. What is the remaining number of moles? 0.1 minus 0.05. 0.05 is the answer. Option D. So convert both the quantity into number of moles. 4.4 gram, 0.1 mole. 3 into 10 power 22 particles, 0.05 mole. So 0.1 mole minus 0.05 mole. Remaining will be 0.05 mole. Next, the maximum number of H plus sulfate ions available from 100 ml 0.1 molar sulfuric acid will be respectively. You see. One mole sulfuric acid can give you two mole H plus and one mole sulfate. That's clear point. So what is the see one mole will give you two mole one mole. What is the quantity taken here? Point one molar, point one liter. So molarity into volume in liter, point one point one. So this is point zero one mole. So this will be point zero two mole. And this will be 0 0.01 mole, 1 mole, 2 mole, 1 mole. So 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.01. So H plus will be 0 0.02. Sulfate will be 0 0.01. So 0 0.02. Option B, 0 0.02 Avogadro number of H plus and 0 0.01 Avogadro number of sulfate. That is what the answer. Okay, let Next. Equal masses of hydrogen oxygen present in a container. Mole fraction of oxygen is. Mole fraction of oxygen is. Equal masses of hydrogen and oxygen. So you take any mass. You take any mass. I am taking 32 gram oxygen. I am taking 32 gram hydrogen. 32 gram hydrogen is 32 by 2. 16 mole. 32 gram oxygen is 32 by 32. 1 mole. We want the mole fraction of oxygen. Mole fraction of oxygen is equal to number of moles of oxygen by number of moles of oxygen plus number of moles of hydrogen. So how much it is? 1 divided by 1 plus 16. That is 1 by 17. You can take any mass. You take any mass. It must be equal. It must be equal. That's all. See, mass of hydrogen must be equal to mass of oxygen. Let it be x. Number of moles of oxygen, that is number of moles of oxygen by number of moles of oxygen plus number of moles of hydrogen. That is mass of oxygen by molar mass of oxygen. Mass of oxygen by molar mass of oxygen. Mass of hydrogen by molar mass of hydrogen. See, this is equal to, this is equal to x. So, x by 32, x by 32, x by 2. You will go to the same answer. 
for the easy calculation we are taking a figure say 32 so this i am taking 32 this i am 30, taking 32 equal mark so 32 means 32 by 32 1 mole 32 means 32 by 2 16 mole so mole fraction of oxygen number of moles of oxygen divided by total 1 by 17 clear next A and B are two ident A and B are two identical vessels. A contain 8 gram methane, B contain 40 gram of unknown gas X, both at 180 m 300 Kelvin. Molar mass of X is Avogadro slow, equal volume of all gases under the same condition of temperature and pressure contains equal number of moles, equal number of molecules. So number of moles remains same. Number of moles remains same. N A equal to N B. That is mass of A by molar mass of A equal to mass of B by molar mass of B. Mass of A is 8. That is Arana. Methane molar mass 16. Upper the 40 molar mass is 3. For 8, it is 16. For 40, it will be 18. Because this is the double on it. This is the double on 80. Option A. Next. The hydrogen phosphate of certain metal has the formula MHPO4. The formula of its metal chloride is. You see, MHPO4. Ionizing here. See, HPO4 is 2 minus. HPO4 is 2 minus. Therefore, this will be 2 plus. So, valency of the metal is 2 plus. You see, this is the salt of phosphoric acid. H3PO4 will give you H plus plus HPO4 minus. Idana. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. H2PO4 minus. Now, this can again ionize. This is the salt. This can again ionize H plus plus HPO4 2 minus. That is what the species here. So, MHPO4. HPO4 is 2 minus. Therefore, M will be 2 plus. That is the chloride. M is 2 plus. Chloride is minus 1. 1 here, 2 here. MCL2. Option B. So, from the given formula, we can identify the valency of the metal. Once you get the valency of the metal, you get the chloride formula. Fine. So, that was the last question. That was the last question from the paper. So, there are 30 questions, 30 typical questions we have discussed from the chapter. Please go through this kind of questions repeatedly from that chapter, chapter and try to cover up all the easy moderate level questions from the chapter and then we can switch on to, you can switch on to the higher level questions. So most of the, most of the typical pattern questions from that chapter coming for even above average level questions we have discussed in this paper. So variety of questions from chapter 1. Almost 30 questions we have discussed in this session. We will meet in another class with another discussion. Okay. Let us wind up. See you. Take care. Bye.